Could you uh, talk a little bit about the two quarterbacks uh, that you're bringing in and the important uh, the importance of, of getting them here uh, early. Thank you. Yep. Um, well, those two guys are, are different and similar. You know, there's a lot of traits that they share. Um, you know, all the intangibles are there for both young men. Both come from really good football programs. Both have been extremely well coached in, in high school. Um, Recording in progress. And then both... Uh, both are high character guys that, that are good academically, very good academically. And, and so, you know, all those things that you want in your quarterback, you know, off the field, those guys will represent their communities very well. They'll represent Penn State University very well. And uh, I think those are important qualities to have at the quarterback position. Uh, they're both very accurate. Um, they're both athletic in their own right, and, and their body types are a little bit different, but both um, have done a great job of preparing themselves to get ready for college football um, from a strength standpoint. They're both very strong young men and uh, very good leaders. And, uh, you know, they walk the walk. You know, they're not real fancy uh, as far as, uh, you know, and we're never into the recruiting process in, in, in an over-the-top manner. Um, like sometimes you run into that. Um, they they recruited they they did a great job for us as leaders in this class of trying to make sure that um, we got uh, the best class possible and I think uh, they both shared that very much uh, they're very respectful towards one another but I know deep down inside they're very strong ultra competitors but having that uh, the, the teammate aspect of it I think is really really important they get along well they communicate amongst each other which is uh, very great, very good to see um, at such a young age um, in their development to have that level of maturity already at hand, I think is, is awesome. So what's the benefit of those guys coming in early? Um, well, you know, you get a head start, right? Um, most importantly, you get a head start academically. I think those guys, um, you know, now, now in this day and age, we can graduate early and start working on your master's degree. So I think that's the number one reason that you should enter early, right? Um, we come to college to get an education and, and that's the biggest benefit of coming to school early is to get a head start on your education, to try to graduate and to try to get at least your first year of your uh, graduate degree paid for because you'll still be on scholarship, hopefully. Um, so that's that's the number one reason. Uh, secondly, to get ahead in the playbook, uh, to get uh, physical reps on the field, obviously, to get practices, to get more familiar how I coach, what our system is, what the language is, everything from A to Z football-wise. And also, very importantly, to get with our strength staff and to start the conditioning program. So their development, um, it just starts earlier, So which is very helpful. Let's go to uh, Tyler Donahue. Hi, Mike. Uh, we just heard from Sean uh, just a few minutes ago, really, and he said sticking around with you for a second year was a huge motivating factor for him to st stay on campus. What were those conversations like with Sean, and when did you kind of get the clarity that you were going to have him in the quarterback room, and how does he help those freshmen? I, I think, um, you know, those conversations are, are relatively private, to be quite honest with you. Um, I will tell you this. You know, I, I told Sean that I wanted him back, obviously, um, for a lot of different reasons. I think he's a great young man, and I really enjoy coaching him. Um, but, uh, you know, a lot of things he had to figure out on his own. I wasn't going to recruit him or sell him on coming back. He had to figure that out on his own. He had to, you know, he had to want to come back um, for this next season. So I think that's really important. He had to try to figure it out and, and not be uh, – you know, overly pushy, you know, and, and try to recruit and, and to influence them. We just, you know, kind of just laid it out there and, and he kind of talked with his his close friends and, and parents and people that that he, uh, you know, confides in and, and came to the conclusion that coming back would be uh, beneficial towards his career and what he wants to do, which we're ecstatic about. I'm sorry, the second part of that question was, the second part of that was what, what does his presence do for the guys we were just talking about, those two incoming freshmen? 
Well, exactly what you would assume, right? I mean, you got a guy with a ton of experience, a lot of playing time, and, and he gets to uh, he gets to help those guys out, right? So there's only certain mon- number of hours that that I'm allowed to meet with those guys. So, you know, I think it's really important to have a, a player like Sean who can coach those guys and, and, you know, on their own player meetings, you know, when they're, when they're on their own and they're in the office and I can't meet with them, um, you know, Sean's going to be going over some stuff. He'll be available to them. They'll have a ton of questions for him. Why'd you go here? What are you thinking here? Where are your eyes at? What's the footwork on this? And those are, those are very helpful things to have uh, along with just modeling behavior, right? That's probably the best thing that, that Sean can do for young quarterbacks is just, you know, those guys watch and observe and, and you learn from uh, everything that he does, the good and the bad, right? Uh, you learn from people's uh, really good plays and great execution and their habits and how they prepare mentally, physically, um, how they get their bodies ready, nutrition, all of those sorts of things. And you also learn from mistakes. So, you know, if, if Sean a- misses a read, then they also learn from mistakes. And, and you know, I think there's a lot of good things that, uh, that Sean's doing right now that he's getting better at. And a lot of it is, you know, you have to teach yourself, right? You have to self-correct at times. And he's, he's getting to expert level at that stuff, which makes it great because he's actually just being able to look at the film and then he's able to self-correct before we even get to the meetings. He's watched the film. He's already know, he already knows the mistakes that he made. I don't have to beat him over the head with it. He, he's already watched it. Now we go through and we talk about it, but you know, at the same time, I know that he's, he's, he's prepared himself and, and done a great job looking at the, the, the film. Let's go to Audrey Hope Snyder. Followed by, whoop, sorry, coach. Uh, let's go to Audrey Snyder followed by uh, Corey. Hey, Mike, good afternoon. Thank you for your time. Yep. Thank you, Audrey. Um, I wanted to ask you how you'd assess the job that you did this year um, with this offense. So obviously, the run game's been a struggle. Um, all in all, how would you assess the job that you did? Uh, not good enough. A lot of room to improve. You know, we didn't execute at the, at the level that we need to execute at. Um, so I, I take the blame. It solely falls it, it, on my shoulders. And uh, we'll get better. I'll get better. And we're going to work really hard to – to get us to a championship level offense. And uh, we're not there yet. We're going to continue to strive and drive and do all the things necessary to compete and, and, and get to that level or I'm going to die trying. Corey Geiger followed by John Petitionock. Hey, Mike, um, I just want to follow up on that a little bit. Uh, you're 81st in total offense. The running game obviously was, was an issue. What, what can you do? Are there some specifics you can share with us that maybe you're going to try to work on this offseason? And, and, and I want to be blunt here. Your system, is your system designed to work in the Big Ten? Yeah, I, I think there's no question it can work in the Big Ten. It can work in any conference uh, that we play. Um, you know, we, when we go back and we look at different things, I think one thing that stands out for us is short yardage ex- execution. Um, that's one of the things that that we're currently looking at uh, in bowl prep and and trying to evaluate, um, you know, why the lack of execution there. So um, you look at the reasons, and sometimes it's it's execution. It's a mistake here. Um, it's a mistake there. Um, we tried to put, you know, who's the mole on it. So we go around and we we look at was it the call? Was it the you know personnel issue? Was it a mental mistake, physical mistake, when we chart all of those things. And what you find out is it's a little bit of everything. You know, that's what happens. And, and we got to find our identity. Um, we have to continue to play to our personal strengths. Um, we have to continue to break tendencies. And at the end of the day, we, we got to continue to be more physical, tough-minded, and re- really just focus on the basics of football, the basic rules. I mean, we can sit here and get fancy all day, and, and at the end of the day, we, we've got to have um, something to put our hat on, you know, and, and you got to have that identity. And, and we tried to establish that identity. We wanted to come downhill at you, and, and we wanted to get under center at times, and we wanted to be physical, and we're going to continue and stay steady in the boat with our plan, and we're going to be able to adjust along the way on, on things that we feel that we need to adjust based on our personnel.
Hey, good morning, Mike. I appreciate your time today. Thank you very much. So going down to the bowl, obviously the game itself is the number one priority, uh, but I also wanted to ask, it looks like there's going to be opportunities for the team to get involved in, in some community events at, at Bush Gardens and elsewhere. What's the value in having <laughs> players and, you know, the coaches, you know, spend time together off the field and, and spend a little bit of time in the community that you're playing in? Oh, I think that's critical. I mean, um, that's part of the bowl process really is to, is to uh, enjoy everything about the bowl. So, you know, establishing relationships, these guys get to meet certain people and, and be able to branch out to market themselves and network. I think that's all part of it. And giving back to the community, obviously, is a great opportunity for these guys to uh, take advantage of that. Sorry about that. I had to flip my iPad. Let's go to Donnie Collins, followed by Mark Wilgenrich. Hey, Mike, thanks for doing this. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. So, so what did you see this year from, from Keandre Lambert-Smith and Parker Washington from a development stand, uh, standpoint? And uh, at some point sooner or later, you know, Jahan's not going to be around. Do, do you think those guys are going to be able to kind of assume his role from a leadership perspective? And, and what makes you think whether they will or won't? Okay. Um, first, uh, Keandre, Keandre Lambert-Smith um, has continued to improve. Um, he's, you know, been a, been a guy that, uh, has some electricity, has some explosion. Um, he needs to continue to get better in, in every facet of, of receiver play. Um, you know, that's from the meetings to the practice field, to the games, you know, and, and, and he's, he's trying his butt off, man, and he's getting better. Um, same thing with Parker. I think Parker has shown his, his ability to make really, really, acrobatic catches and has shown um, a level of dependability that that is is needed and wanted uh, he has to continue to work on his blocking his toughness I think those are the aspects of his game that he needs to continue to improve his route running is very very good his, his, his ball skills are over the top good um, but uh, you know I think those guys are progressing in the right way and as far as their leadership, you know, that's going to be built in the offseason. We'll see what kind of strides they, they make there and, and how much um, ownership they take and how much, you know, uh, the players look up to them and, and are they doing their jobs? Are they accountable? And it's not about what you really say. It's what you do. Your actions speak so loud I can't hear what you're saying. And uh, so those guys have to continue to grind and work at it, and I think then the leadership will follow that. Um, but I think that's the most important thing. Jahan wasn't a very vocal leader, um, but, but he worked really hard. And, and uh, you know, with his production, he had a lot of credibility amongst the other peers. And I think the more guys produce and the more they do their job day in and day out and they're accountable, uh, the more credibility they get. So hopefully that continues and uh, we're hopeful that it will. Let's go Mark Wilgenrich and then Ben Jones. And Mike, you mentioned the run game earlier. Did that meet your expectations this year? And did the reset switch have any impact over the last couple of weeks uh, heading into the bowl game, specifically because Noah Kane said he felt a bit refreshed and you know, kind of motivated for the Outback Bowl? Yeah, can you do me a favor, Mark? Just restate your question. I'm a little unclear on what you want me to answer. You mentioned the run game earlier, specifically short yardage. Did the run game meet your expectations this season? And then having a couple of weeks off, did that recess switch help the running backs in the line any, in any way? Well, I'm sorry to be so uh, abrupt here, but obviously our run game needs to, needs to improve. I think I stated that. Um, and also have the, the, the reset button, um, as you speak of, did it help? I mean, some time off is, is going to help you, uh, you know, recuperate and and regenerate your, your body and heal up um, as long as you do it the right way. And our strength and training and our sports science department have a great handle on, on volume of workload and, and uh, when to recover, how to recover and all that. So they're in great hands there. Um, so we'll reap the benefits of, of having some off time. And then we'll see, um, you know, what um, what improvements we can make, and, and we'll find out when we when we line up against Arkansas here shortly. Ben Jones and John Sauber. 
Hey, Mike, going back to Texas, when you guys, when that staff had a change, you were hired six days after you were out of a job by Penn State. Manny Diaz was hired five days after he was out of a job. What are those days like? And when you're a, uh, an assistant coach that is maybe sought after, what are the variables that kind of go into your decision making that maybe go outside of money? Well, you always want to align with really good people. You know, it's told long ago, you know, um, whenever you take a job, make sure that you're, you're working for a good person. So I knew James was a great dude and, and uh, an awesome leader who has a great culture here at Penn State. Um, having played my college ball in Pennsylvania and coached in, in the PSAC for eight seasons, I know what Penn State football is all about. I love this state. I love this area. This university is awesome uh, with the academics. So for me, it was really a no-brainer. I didn't think much about it. Um, I didn't have to really consult. I was ecstatic to get the call and uh, couldn't be more happy with where I'm at right now. And I love this place. Um, so those days were challenging at first when you, when you hear there's a change, right? Um, you're, uh, you know, you, after, after so many years of being in the business, it's, um, it's part of the process. It really is. And, and you have to be professional about it. Um, so as a family, we talked about it, my wife and I, and my kids are at an age where they're the oldest one kind of gets it. So he was involved in some conversations, but, um, you know, we were actually on vacation and, you know, just taking a deep breath and really didn't stress too much about it. Uh, we knew that, uh, we had done a, a you know, our best job, you know, if you put your best effort forward, um, there's no regrets. And so as long as you work your tail off and you coach hard and you recruit hard, uh, good things are going to happen. So you just kind of enjoyed the family at that time because we were on vacation. I wasn't going to spoil a dog on vacation over, over some, uh, um, you know, something as, as, as what could be very stressful, but uh, you know, we, we stayed strong and I, I really, I got to thank my wife for all that. You know, she's a big part of that. And she's, she's our backbone as a family. So give her a lot of credit because, you know, when spouses um, are involved, obviously when you, you know, you're, you're talking to the family about changing jobs and having to relocate stress levels can go up or stress levels can go down based on how those conversations are had. So uh, much appreciation to her and how she uh, leads our family. Couldn't do it without her. And we got time for one more. We'll go to John Sauber, Center Daily Times. Hey, Mike. Uh, it seemed like there were a few times this year where you guys were having a lot of success throwing the ball and then would kind of get away from the passing game. What goes into that decision-making process as a play caller, and do you feel obligated to run the ball at times? Well, when you're trying to run the ball and be successful, you got to give it uh, chances, right? So you just – you know, you can't just abort it. And, and we're not, um, I think maybe some people may have, maybe some, maybe some coaches would have said, screw it, let's try to throw it 60 times a game. And it is what it is. Uh, we're not going to do that. We're going to try to run the ball. Or we're going to die trying. Um, what goes into play calling is down in distance tendencies, how many safeties are high. You know, when you go back to the Illinois game, right, which is probably one of the worst losses I've ever had in my life. Um, not, not one of the most, the most. Uh, frustrating times that I've ever had. Um, they were playing coverage. They were dropping eight. They're playing with safety's high. You better run the ball. 